Judith Pogar is considered the strongest ever female chess player. And in this video, we're going to take a look at five of her most excellent, sounds like I'm in Bill and Ted's adventure now, moves. And I have to say, she was a tactical genius and some of these moves are simply stunning. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the chess.com channel and we're going to move on to some beautiful, beautiful moves on the chessboard now. We're starting off with a nice easy tactic just to get you in the right frame of mind. In this one Judith is playing against Pavlina Chiligarov and it's Judith to play and win. Just look out for the back rank. If you struggle with any of the tactics I show you, do press and use that pause button. Let's see if you can play like the great Judith. Queen takes f8 check. Oh yeah. And here black resign because after king takes, the bishop is going to slip into h6 and there comes the back ranker. Nice and simple. They will get harder. I'm warning you now. I'm warning you now. This game is considered one of Judith's most amazing and tremendous ever games and it's clear why. Judith is playing against Vishiwan Anand, one of the strongest players of all time. One of the things personally I liked about and do like about Judith's play is her tremendous energy. She kept on just oh, throwing pieces, the kitchen sink, there's, 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 I don't know, a rock, there's a stone, there's a car. She just kept throwing everything at her opponents and I've kind of modelled some of my play on this to keep that pressure up. It must have been horrible for her opponents to have this onslaught coming against them. This is shown here, white to play, and now Judith comes in with rook d6, another brilliantly energetic move. This attacks the queen, and of course, this queen is tied down to the defense of g7. If it moves away, the queen comes in, checkmate on g7. So Anand plays f6, but now bishop d2, and this lines up against the black queen, e4, another piece comes in, b5, bishop e6, rook a7. And even though this next move may seem a little bit odd, it's one of my favorite moves in the whole game, because it just demonstrates that Judith understands that Vishiwan is totally tied down here. Black is nearly even in a position, or Zugzwang, whatever move black plays, it can weaken his position. And this shows great understanding. And just the calm rookie six dominates black's position. Black tried a5, but this is a nothing move. And now Judith bit by bit improves her position. And with rook c7, you can see the pressure mounting against black's structure. And Judith went on to win. Even though she's a piece down, black just can't move. Brilliant, brilliant foresight to make the sacrifice work and just look at the energy of White's pieces there. We now move on to one of my favorite games of all time. Often where you, when you pair the elements fire and fire against each other, you're gonna get an explosion. And here you've got two of the best attackers of all time, Judith playing with the black pieces against Alexei Shirov. And here Judith dives in with Queen takes g5. And this is a way to stop, not just win a pawn, but stop black from castling queenside. The idea, of course, is that the queen is taken, the knight will come in and win that queen. The pawn on e4 is actually pinned down because of the rook. And this is the start of just an amazing couple of moves here, where the black knights really come to life. Shiro's problem is his king is a little bit more weaker. He tried to counterattack with knight a5, hitting the bishop on b7, but Judith goes forwards. And this next move must have been one of the most pleasurable moves she had the chance to play. I wish I could play a move like this in my lifetime. Knight to e3. And this just emphasizes her will and the way she played forwards, never retreating unless she had to, and playing with the utmost energy and aggression. And one of the things that's interesting here is, well, maybe maybe White can take the queen now, thinking, oh yeah, thank you, uh, you've just given me your queen. Are you gonna resign, Judith? Well, maybe I'll play a check. 
it could be mate. Just look at that check mate. Oh, oh it looks so good. And after knight e3, other options here are very bad. For example, if white takes on e3, grabs the bishop, then the combination of queen and knight combine beautifully with knight f3 check and queen d2 ending in mate. And if queen to g3, as played in the game, well, now Judith can just win some material, and she does, and she goes on to win a lovely game. Uh, and you're not going to see many knights combining to create a dance of death like that in your lifetime. Here Judah is paired against fellow countryman Fernandes Burks and in this position she's sacrificed a piece on g5 and black has recaptured here. What should and did she now play? The obvious move might be capturing that rook but as you're probably guessing the obvious move is not always the one that should be played. Well, the move she played shows brilliant understanding of the position and how to get through to the enemy's king. She always had her eyes on that king and she always found ways through, often in a very direct manner. And the brilliant move here is g4. Now you might be thinking, hang on, why is that brilliant? Well, it's brilliant because the idea is to simply play h4 but stop black from playing g4 Therefore, whatever happens, this h-file will become open. Other moves were not as strong. This is directly going for the king, my kind of way of playing chess. And after rook b8 here, she now goes h4. And you can see this file is opening. And let's just have a look how the attack continued. She now moves her queen into f4. And after bishop b7, yet another brilliant move here. It's blow after blow, rook to h7, check. And now the point of this is the queen comes to h2. And if king g7, we have queen h6 and rook to h1. And we can see it's going to be checkmate coming up. The king went back to g8, rook h1 anyway. And after bishop takes g5, Judith just played f4. And here black had to give up his queen to stop checkmate, so Judith went on to win. Lovely, lovely energy yet again shown with that brilliant attack. Well, if you know you're an attacking player, you have to play attacking openings, and there's not more of an attacking opening than the King's Indian defense. And in this position, Judith has black against Alexander Chernin. And here we can see that Judith has a lot of pieces quite nastily placed against that King. And after the move bishop d3, she now broke through. How did she break through? She played rook takes g2 check. Again, forcing a way through to the king. If king takes queen h3 is checkmate. And after rook takes g2, just bishop takes h3. And this is building up to a major discovered check. And with the other black rook coming in, white's king is in the middle of an onslaught. The game continued, knight to e4, and now another piece comes in. Typical Judah, every piece jumping into action. Knight takes e5, bishop takes e5, the bishop now lined up, and after knight g5, well, we can see that white is simply lost as Judith takes on g5. She's actually a pawn up here, but with rook g8, black resigned after only one more move, and that is f3 with some nasty checks coming next. Deadly attacking play from Judith, fantastic stuff. So which of those five moves was your favorites? They were some stunning examples of energy and using the initiative at the chessboard. We can all learn from Judith's play and she was the strongest ever female player and a brilliant all-round chess player, being one of the best in the world. Let's just remember, not just a strong female player, but one of the best chess players combined with any sex or whatever. That's irrelevant. And we can see that from a brilliant wins. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel and leave your comments below.